Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Chris with White Rhino Fabrication and today I'm going to kind of show you how I overcame the obstacles with the gap between the bar feeder and the spindle liner and not being able to get the spindle liner or the hard spindle liner out of the machine. So this is kind of the issue I had talked about in my other video. This slides in, and if you notice, I machined it to have like a 30 second gap here so that it would clear, but it was a quarter inch or so taller, and so it would come up and hit this sheet metal just like that. And you know, for as much as these machines cost, you don't want to cut the sheet metal and make it look bad. And I just wasn't going to do that. So this was, um, that was my fix. And I don't know if that's a bad fix or a good fix, but I know it's fixed. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm working with. So, so this is how I was able to get it so I didn't have to pull this off every time. So the next thing that I did to address the gap between the bar feeder and this and I'm gonna show you the whole assembly here. So, you, again, you have to have these uh, spacers to fill the inside. And so I just reused those. And then I purchased the spindle liner kit for the, th the three inch bore lathes. And that comes with the spindle liners, this, attachment, I don't know what you want to call that. And then the um, the part that has the spring loaded so you can add your spindle liners. The, it didn't, I don't know if this kit just was missing this. Uh, it didn't have a spacer here for the spring. So I, I just cut that on our laser, put that in and And this works really well. So what I did though is on this machine, I machined this adapter that screws into this and then this screws in to the, um, the spindle liner or the, the big bore kit, if you will. Um, and, and that basically takes up the gap between that and the bar feeder allows me to use the spindle liners that I thought was coming with the machine and and then it just screws in so and what's nice is if I have a three inch piece I just unscrew this so the three three and a half inch piece I forget what the inside is and then if I have a um, four inch piece, I just unscrew that, the whole assembly and bring it out. And that makes my, my changeovers so much faster. It's definitely more efficient this way. So, on the, the four inch big bore kit, when, um, when you look at online for spindle liner kits, this is what you get. I wanna say it's $1,600, $1,800 for this. I'm fine with that. It comes with just about all the sizes you need. Well, <clears throat> on the big bore kit, when you order a spindle liner kit, this is what you get. You get a bunch of these that um, you have enough to line the whole inside and uh, you have enough one inch bore drilled in it with tapered. And then you get these, which is kind of PVC, I'm guessing is what it is. That's what it looks like, Schedule 40. And you basically st st stack it 
basically this whole setup and you keep stacking it like that. It's like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. It's it's I really dislike this. Um, you almost feel like you're taken advantage of because um, this is not what you expect. You don't see this, at least I didn't. <clears throat> Again, I may have missed it, but this was not what I was expecting. And so I really wish that they would um, fix this on the this machine. So in conclusion, while these I considered were uh, a major problem, they, they were a fairly easy fix, but it meant that I had to spend the time to to make it work and figure a way out. Uh, one thing that I I never mentioned before, but you can get the thread pitch on um, both the inside and the outside from Haas's webpage. Uh, and I made three or four of those adapters and it would never screw into the inner side. And I believe it was a, um, like a, four millimeter pitch, or I don't remember exactly, but it turned out that it wasn't a four millimeter. It ended up being like a 4.2 millimeter pitch, and that was the only way I could get it to screw in. So I, ha I really had to play around with that to get it, but for the most part, I, I spent a day kind of coming up with a, a solution for this, which um, it is what it is, but that's, that is something I think the factory could really improve on and, and take care of for future use. In our next video, I'll talk about um, the new VF4 SS that we just got. Almost one year to the day from the ST35 and how, how the installation went, the few little things that I ran into and a few things that I, I did to fix it.